Hi, I'm Vincenzo Coya, and welcome to STAT 545, the video series designed to help you write a clean and modern data analysis. So far when we've been working with data, we've seen things like numbers and text, and sometimes even logical values like true or false. And while these will get us pretty far in a data analysis, sometimes we just have to work with more special types of objects like dates and times, as well as factors in R. So that's what today we'll be talking about, is how to deal with these special data types in R, specifically dates and times, and factors. As you can probably guess, there are packages that we can download to help us work with these special data types. For dates and times, we can download the Lubridate package, and for factors, we can download the Forcats package. The Penguins dataset is an example of a dataset that contains factors. In this case, the species, island, and sex columns are all examples of factors, and you can tell because it says FCT underneath the column. And what a factor is, is it's basically just in a categorical variable, and observations are made on these categorical variables. So for example, with the species, we have a daily penguins that we see here, but if we wanted to see all possible levels or categories of the, of this, of the factor, we can use the levels function. So I'm going to pull the species column and then find out how many levels it has. And we see that there's a daily, chin strap, and gentoo are all the possible levels. The flights data set is an example of a data set that contains a date time object. And that's contained in the time underscore hour column here. And a date time object always has the date in a year, month, day, hour, minute, second format. In today's episode, we'll go over two types of tasks that are most common for each of these data types. The first task when it comes to factors is to reorder your factors. Now by ordering of a factor, what I mean is that some categories come after other categories. And being deliberate about the ordering of your factors is especially important when you're plotting. Here's an example of a bar plot showing the number of penguins surveyed for each species. To make this plot more effective, we should order the bars from largest to smallest, which involves reordering the levels of the species factor. We can do this by modifying the species column using the dplyr mutate function. The new species column is going to be a modified version of the old species column, modified by the forecats function fct in freq a function that orders a factor by frequency. Now, the species show up in order of most abundant to least abundant. And by the way, if we look at the modified tibble, it doesn't look like there's been any change to the species column at all. But actually, under the hood, the species column is keeping track of the order of the species. Here's another plot this time of the GDP per capita of Asian countries in 2007. This plot would also be more effective if the countries are reordered. This time, we're reordering according to another variable, GDP per capita, so we need to specify that. And by the way, you can tell that function is from the forecats package if it starts with FCT. And now what about GDP per capita plotted over time for each continent? The ordering of the legend doesn't match up with the plots. Oceania should be at the top, followed by Europe, etc. This time, we'll redefine continent on the fly in ggplot2, and this time reorder according to two variables. At the largest year, order by GDP per capita. There are many other ways you can reorder a factor as well, but this should be enough to get you started. The second task when it comes to factors is to change your factor levels. Now remember, levels in a factor are just the possible categories that the factor can take. For example, with the penguins dataset, the species could either be one of a daily, chin strap, or gentoo. Now with levels, we either want to change the way that they appear, or add to the levels or take away from the levels. If you wish your factor level said something different, use fct underscore recode. Just because a level doesn't appear in your data doesn't mean it's not a valid level. 
Let's add emperor and king penguins as possible species. You can't tell that more levels have been added just by looking at the tibble, but you might want these missing levels to appear when plotting your data. You'll just have to make sure that your aesthetic mapping doesn't drop unused levels. In a previous episode, we made this plot of GDP per capita across different continents, and highlighted Canada. Although this time, I've reordered the continents by increasing median GDP per capita using the FCT underscore reorder function. Let's use the for cats package instead of the if underscore else function. In, th in this time, let's also highlight India in addition to Canada and group everything else into an other category. And maybe move the alpha transparency to the other category. Moving on to dates and times, the first task is to extract components from a date object or a date time object. And by this I mean extracting, say, the year or maybe the week from a date object, or maybe the hour from a date time object. This sample from the flights table contains a date time column. Use lubridate functions to get the year, the weekday, the quarter, the day of year, you name it. And what if your data doesn't come with a date or date time object already? With Lubridate, you can make a date object with combinations of the letters Y, M, and D, depending on how your data is written. These functions are tremendously flexible. You can use the same logic to make a date time object. If it matters to you, you can specify the time zone as well. The Sibyl package makes even more objects available, like year months, year quarters, and year weeks. The second task for dates and times is to add or subtract time using time spans. Here's that snippet from the flights table again. Here, I'm going to add three days to the original date time column. Notice in row 4 that the hour jumped ahead from 21 o'clock to 22 o'clock. That's because daylight saving time began on March 10th. Because we added 3 days as a duration, it's as if 72 hours were allowed to pass on the column on the left. A duration in Lubridate is indicated by a function starting with a D, like D days and D years. You might have instead just wanted to increase the day by 3, instead of actually letting 72 hours pass on the given dates. This type of time span is called a period, and you can make it by dropping the D in front of the functions. Periods are especially useful for months, which don't have a set number of days. Subtracting one month as a period just rolls back the calendar month, whereas subtracting one month as a duration sends the dates back in time by some average month duration. Well, that should give you a pretty solid foundation for starting to work with factors in R using the forecast package, and dates and times in R with the Lubridate package. But these packages actually go much further than what we are able to cover, so I do encourage you to take a look at the documentation just to see how far they can go. And remember, it's not that we actually need these special data types in order to do a data analysis, but having them around sure makes doing our data analysis easier. And there are many more special data types that are made available through R. Maybe your analysis has a special data type too. If so, let us know in the comments. To summarize today's episode, when it comes to working with factors with the four cats package, keep two tasks in mind. First, change a factor's order and second, change a factor's levels. When it comes to working with dates and times in R, first, extract from a date or a date time object, and two, add or subtract durations or periods. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. As always, join us next class where we discuss relational data or joining two or more tibbles. 
Don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that you can stay up to date with more data analysis goodies.